What's up YouTube, Jason here with Buy My Bits. In today's video, I'm going to answer the age old question. And that is how much better can the Plex transcoder work using an SSD versus a hard drive? Now SSDs run pretty rampant nowadays. Most people use them as their boot OS. If you don't, well, you need to do that. But the point is SSDs are worlds faster than standard hard drives. Even the cheapest and slowest SSD out there is going to outperform every hard drive on the market. It's just one of those facts of life that we've all come to accept and kind of enjoy. But in today's video, I wanna approach the question that I've actually been asked a lot, and that is what kind of performance differences can you get assigning the Plex transcoder directory to an SSD versus a hard drive? Now, since most people do run SSDs as their primary OS drive, and most of the time when you install Plex, you're going to install it to the default directory, you're gonna keep most of the default directories within the Plex settings the same, most of the time you're already gonna have your Plex transcode directory hosted on your SSD. But in the rare case you don't have an SSD or perhaps you have a very small SSD, so you install Plex and its program features, Plex data directory and the transcode directory is pointed to an alternative hard drive, this could be affecting you. And that is the simultaneously reading and writing to the same hard drive when you're transcoding a video. It could actually cause some limitations depending on what your hardware is. Let's say if you have a very powerful powerful CPU, you might run into some bottlenecks with your actual hard drive first before you hit the bottleneck of your CPU. And today I tested this theory using the same exact method I have been using for my Battle OS series, a series of which I am testing multiple operating systems to see which one can get the most performance out of your system. You can check out more about that series right here in the corner. But in these videos, I used an i7-3770 system with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 250 gigabyte SSD from Samsung that not only played as the boot OS, but also as the media host and the transcode directory. Now I've kept this variable constant throughout all of my tests to get a, a set parameter of results to test each operating system. Now the only difference in this test versus Battle OS test is that in this one, I did re-enable the hyper-threading, so I was taking full advantage of the system's capabilities. And in this case, I added the hard drive into the mix, which was a Western Digital Blue Drive. So to start this off, I got a baseline set of numbers. That's where I took the SSD and I hosted not only the media files and the Plex data directory, but also the transcode directory. This allowed me to test the system at its best performing options with no limitations of storage. And I should also note here for ease of use for me and for another video that I'm actually gonna be doing next, which is another Battle OS, I did use Windows 9, which is really technically Windows 8.1 embedded something enterprise, something, something, I don't know. Someone sent it to me, it's a special product key. Um, Linus did a fake video on it with a clickbait title that wasn't really Windows 9 or 8.1 embedded, I don't know. But anyways, this is basically Windows 8.1 embedded edition. So uh, I, I am testing this for the next Battle OS. So I just figured, what the heck, just go ahead and install it, get it up and running, get my testing parameter set up so I can do this video and my next video. But as for the numbers for my baseline performance test, I was able to get seven transcoded streams at the same time with an additional four direct streams which is pretty much on par with the way the system was running before as my Plex media servers, so no surprises here on its capabilities. But to further my test, as same as I did on my Battle OS series, I did run an optimizer on the video file that I was using to see how fast it can optimize the movie file that I was testing with, which yes, is Back to the Future, because Back to the Future is awesome. Now the optimized speed that I was able to get through this test was a maximum of 5.8 times the video. So okay, this isn't bad, this is a good baseline, it gives me something to compare to. Again, SSD hosting the media and the transcoding folder. So for my next test, I moved the transcode directory to the hard drive. And with this test, I had a huge dip in performance, giving me only six transcoded streams at the same time with one direct stream. And to top it all off, I only got 5.6x on the optimization test. Now for the optimization thing, 5.6 versus 5.8, I honestly think that's more of a, a margin of error that I can accept as being equal, mainly because when it comes to, you know, hard drive versus SSD, unless I'm testing, you know, converting multiple videos at the same time, like let's say if I were to test five at the same time, I really shouldn't notice too much of a dip in performance. However, there was still a dip in performance, not really worried about it too much, not very significant, it's still there though. 
So automatically know that if we use a hard drive versus an SSD, you're going to lose performance. It's a limitation of the hard drive. And by limitation, of course, I mean writing multiple files to multiple spots on the hard drive at the same time. When I was analyzing the disk usage for this system while I was doing the testing, it never really went over like 50 or 60% of the total hard drive utilization. Instead, it was more of a limitation of being able to do all of them all at the same time. You gotta remember it's moving parts and it has to go back and forth and find the place to write the data to on multiple different places. Now to take this a step further, I just wanted to test for my own curiosity because, well, I assume there's gonna be a few people out there that run it like this. I moved the media files, the movie file, over to the hard drive itself and I kept the hard drive as the transcoding location as well. And with this test, I was only able to get five transcoded streams at the same time with an additional five direct streams. And as expected, the optimization test netted the same 5.6x. Again, mainly because if you're only optimizing one video, you're not really gonna be pushing your hard drive that hard. So if you have a system that has the hard drive hosting not only the media files, but also the transcode directory, and your system is pretty beefy, but you're still running into some limitations, that might be your issue. A couple things to bear in mind here, this is a single hard drive used as your transcoder folder and a single hard drive or SSD used as the media hosting folder. This is not taken into consideration things like RAID 5 or RAID 6 or you know RAID 1 or whatever. It's not taking any of that into consideration. Those are obviously going to perform differently based off of each one. I don't know how well it's gonna perform reading and writing multiple files all at the same time with a file system like that, but I would imagine it would still possibly be slower than an SSD. Maybe I can do that in another video. Just remember, SSDs are pretty cheap, okay? You don't need an expensive one. You can hop on Newegg or Amazon and find a super cheap, low capacity SSD that you can use as your transcode directory. It doesn't have to be a large one. But the end result is a much better performing Plex media server that's going to be able to transcode and serve multiple files at the same time without the bottleneck of your hard drive, at least not for the transcoder. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully that answered some questions for you. I know that this is kind of one of those topics where most people run SSD, so it's not really a questionable or debatable thing, but I have had people ask me, what kind of real performance gains are you gonna get using an SSD as a transcode folder versus an HDD? Now, this will not affect the speed of which Plex loads things like poster arts or metadata. That's actually your Plex data folder, which is usually also hosted on your main OS SSD, if you have an SSD. This is only for transcoding when you're literally just playing a movie and taking it down from its original file to a lower quality. But hey, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Like every single one of you, like and subscribe below, and have a great day.